The art of programming. The ability to regurgitate commands in order to wield the power of these bit and bite behemoths to obey our bidding. Like this tasty lick of coding beauty that I did a while back that shows you the strength of programming excellence by making a crappy little keylogger. How about let's do the keylogger some justice this time by making one that actually works. Why Python? Well, how about you stop asking questions, jerk face? Whoa, that escalated quickly. Python is a simple, powerful, and flexible programming language. If you're new to the programming scene, it's a good language to start with. To get started with it, go to www.python.org slash get it and download the version of Python for your current operating system. Once installed, your computer should now be Python friendly, including new links to the Idle platform, which is Python's scripting interface. If you start up Idle, to start a new script, you can go to File and New. The next step is to import some definitions. Well, go ahead. Okay, here's what that means. To make programming easier, Python has what's called modules available for it that contain useful code and can extend Python's functionality. For instance, if you want Windows to interact with Python, you can download the Python Windows module that contains the code necessary for this interaction to work. The modules we'll need for our keylogger to work are the PyWin32 module and the PyHook module, both of which you can find at this website. Just download and install the latest versions for your 32-bit or 64-bit system. After you have them installed, you can then import the modules we need. We need PyHook as well as Python.com from the PyWin32 module, and we'll also need the Sys and Logging modules. First, we want to create a variable that tells us where to save the logging data. You'll need to use double slashes in the folder path, however, in order for Python to understand it. All right, now let's create a function that monitors our keyboard events. We can use the logging module to set our file name, debugging level, and logging format. Then we can have it log each character as its corresponding ASCII format and then return true at the end of the function and watch for the next event. For the last bit of code, we need to set up our PyHook manager, which allows us to set a hook on Windows events. So let's set a hook to the keyboard event and set the key down variable to watch for key presses and use the Python con module to capture the key messages. The last thing to do is save it. Give it a name, but make sure that you save it as a .pyw file instead of a .py file. This will ensure that it executes silently without popping up any windows. That's it. Surprisingly simple, wasn't it? After you've tested it to make sure that it works, the next thing to figure out is how to launch it on a user without the user knowing that it's been launched. One way to do that is to attach it to the user's favorite program. Here's how. Let's say that the user uses Internet Explorer constantly. I know that's hard to believe, but this is just a hypothetical situation. What we can do is open up Notepad and create a batch file that launches both our Python script and Internet Explorer when clicked. To make it invisible, be sure to add at echo off at the top and then start in an empty set of quotation marks before each command. Now save it as launch.bat under all files and change the Internet Explorer shortcut to run the batch file. When it's clicked, it will look as if Internet Explorer starts up normally. But if we check where our log file is stored, we'll see that it's logging all of our keystrokes. Since we didn't include a quit function in our code, for now if you want to exit out of the program, go into your task manager and under processes in the PYW and the Python W processes. Okay, now go log some keystrokes. But if you test this out on somebody, make sure that they know you're doing it because I don't condone malicious use of this program. Seriously guys, hack to learn, don't learn to hack. This is intentionally just a basic keylogger with room for improvement. So if you have any improvement suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And if you want any more coding tutorials, please click here to visit my coding playlist. And if you want more tutorials, you can click here to subscribe or click here to visit my channel. 
Also feel free to visit my Google Plus, Facebook, or Twitter channels to get more news and updates. Alright, that's it for this tutorial. Until next time, have some fun into your weekend.